You want to understand your brain. Well, you must have been told you need to dedicate some 10 to 14 years of study to become a neurologist. But what you eventually become after all these long years is nothing like what you ever thought of. And that's no exaggeration. Unfortunately, at the end of it all, you're only able to focus on one part of the brain. And more sadly, you become more concerned about treating disorders than really understanding the brain. But that's not going to be your case. There's an escape route for you from the long, boring path of neurology which offers no help in understanding your brain. It's the path I'll be showing you today. Your brain may be one of the most crowded places on earth, housing billions of neutrons in that small compartment. However, understanding that overpopulated organ is as easy as finding a grain of sand in the desert. Interesting, ironies are into brain too. It is a complex and intricate organ, yet understanding it is simple and basic. Now, think about those days as a kid, where your parents and teachers could tell your strengths and weaknesses. They could tell that you struggle with calculations, but you're excellent at grammar. They could point out the kid who needs more sports training and the one that needs more English lessons. They could easily score your spelling ability and your other skills as well. Surprisingly, they did all these without a complex biological diagram or an x-ray machine to scan your brain. But sadly, you're grown, and the only things you think of when it comes to understanding your brain are the frontal and temporal lobes. That's because the answers you find on the internet and everywhere when you say you want to understand your own brain only complicate what's already a confusing phenomenon. Google easily takes you to an impromptu biology class and tutors you like a PhD student. At the end of the day, your class is over. But the only success you achieved was your familiarity with new terminologies and organs in the brain. When it comes to understanding it, you're clueless. When people like you and me talk about understanding our brains, we simply imply a couple of things. We want to find solutions to problems. We want to maximize our productivity. We want to develop better approaches to situations. We want to discover working formulas for life. So, how do you understand your own brain? You need no education or literacy to understand your brain. You don't need to be a Ben Carson to complete such an easy task. All you need is an eye for your own detail. As long as you've got eyes to see, you should understand your brain in no time. Understanding your brain is super easy. And here's how. It is simply having an understanding of what works for you. Yes, it's that simple. And this isn't the typical tips or excerpts you'd come across on social media from a productivity expert or a self-acclaimed anything. This is what works. You shouldn't expect less from a video that teaches you what works for you. It is sure to work for you as well. Need proof that this works? You are the proof. Once you watch, learn, and practice, you become proof that, like your brain, this also works. However, it's never been about the intricacies of the brain. If it were to be, then we'd be talking about the cerebrum, cerebellum, and the brainstem. You already know that's for neurology classes, and we're not having one here. Summing up a 14-year curriculum into a short video? Impossible. <laughs> However, it's always been about the brain's primary functions. It's a complex organ that becomes basic when we focus on its primary functions. These primary functions are easy to come by. They include logic, interpreting information, memory, storing memories, study, receiving and processing information, aptitude, acquiring knowledge and skill, cognition, processing thoughts. Like sight is to the eye, these functions are the primary functions of the brain. They perform these same roles in every human, however, through different methods. While you and I receive, process, and store information generally, we do that through different methods. Therefore, understanding your brain isn't just understanding brains in general, but understanding the uniqueness of your own brain. This implies that you understand the unique way you receive, process, interpret, and store information. It's just about understanding what works for you. But what really works for you? You need to know how senseless we are without the brain. We can sense nothing without the brain's help. The five senses of sight, hearing, touch, taste, and smell are interpretation of signals from the brain. We only feel, taste, see, hear, and smell after the brain has interpreted those incoming data. This is general. So, what's specific? In receiving information, due to your own peculiarity, you may favor a particular sense over others. But why is that? We were all born tabula rasa, with a clean slate memory. The memory card we were born with had no previous file in it. From the time we are born, we learn to interact with other people and the world around us. We often approach these interactions in different ways based on our upbringing, culture, and unique personality. Easily, we are a product of experiences. 
Hence, our preferences and unique traits are offshoots of some of our experiences. Your preference for a particular sense over others when receiving information is linked to your unique experience. Like we said, it's understanding what works for you. Some prefer to receive information with their visual organs. They're the ones you'd see reading books and watching movies. Though movies deploy both your visual and auditory organs. But there are also some who have a disinclination towards sight. They literally live an auditory life. You'd almost want to wonder if all they use their eyes for is to keep their legs and hands company while walking and working. You'd find them at the receiving end of audiobooks, music, podcasts, and phone calls. Yeah, they have a preference for calls over texts. Do you see why you should do what works for you? You shouldn't force a brain that is bent towards visual reception to receive information through the ears. While others primarily prefer these two, some are more sensitive to touches. I've met a few folk who smell nothing, but taste the bitter, sour, sweet, and salty more than the average person. Such folks should harness the preferences of their brains, rather than force it to do something else. For more productivity, we're to adapt to the methods our brain picks for us, and not force a change. The key is to embrace what works for your brain and leverage it for more productivity. In relation to processing and storing information, you may notice you always need to see or read something before you can reflect, process, and store it well. On the contrary, others may prefer to talk things over for proper processing, reflection, and storage. In essence, what your preference implies is that visual processing works better for you, while the others prefer auditory or kinesthetic processing. As a result, when you find yourself dealing with information, an evidence that you now understand your brain is that you try to associate most of the information with their visual representation or imageries. Moving on to the logical and cognitive functions of the brain, the famous theory of multiple intelligences takes intelligence out of its broadness and explains its specificity to us. The eight intelligences are visual spatial, linguistic verbal, logical mathematical, body kinesthetic, musical, interpersonal, intrapersonal, naturalistic. While a person might be strong in a specific area, they most likely possess a range of abilities. For instance, an individual might be strong in musical, intrapersonal, and visual intelligence. However, the good news I've got for some people is that even if you've always thought the dullness was genetically transmitted to you, I'm glad to reveal that all humans have at least one of these intelligences. Your brain's got the power, but it's your duty to search out what works for you. But with all of these numerous specialties, how do you understand your own uniqueness? Well, it's such an easy and fun thing to do. If you can watch a football match or see a movie till its end, then you can figure out what works for you. It's as simple as you think. All you need to do is observe. Yeah, you watch yourself like a movie and observe noticeable patterns. You read a book and listen to an audiobook. Then ask yourself which of the two you prefer. You try chats and phone calls and then examine which of them you enjoy more. You try to process and store information by listening or process by reading and determine your preference. You try out your different intelligences and figure out the one you flow more naturally in. And don't forget that you don't discover to remain stagnant. You discover to build on it. Go ahead and begin your building work already. A true fact you must know is that the smartest people are those who have come to the full understanding of what works for their brains. Now that you're smarter than you were before watching this video, you could help us make more people smart by liking this video and subscribing to this channel to get more quality content like this.